Anurudha gazed at Pungazali for some time and called the nurses who brought her near. He asked them something in a soft voice. After they answered, he left the room. Looking at all Workadian, he said, Tirumala. Something seems to have gone wrong. Said. Yes, sir. So it seems to me. This young woman is probably about twenty years old. Not even that much. The Madarasi I was looking forward to should be forty years old. Beyond that. Yes, yes, you have seen Mandakini Devi on the island of Ceylon, haven't you? Yes, sir. I looked and tried to bring him here as per their orders, but could not. Isn't this woman Mandakini Devi? No, Gurudev. Certainly not that mother. So who is she? How did she get here? If you ask her, you will. All Workadians said. What's the use of asking the dumb? Oh Lord! She is dumb. That's what I asked the nurses. They said she hasn't spoken since coming here. Lord! Who did you send to identify her and bring her back? Aha! Uh -huh. Did that fool do something wrong, what? What a fool, Gurudev! Would you have sent a fool for such things? Looked wise, didn't a youth fight with a monkey warrior on the day I went to Palaire? Yes. Panyagapani, the son of the old doctor. That's him. After sending you and Valaveria to meet Kari Kaler, I got the doctor's son released from prison and brought him back. I found him worthy of our army and sent him to Kadakare. He used to go to Kadakare before. Did he bring this girl here? I gave all the correct information and sent it. He also brought it to Thiruvayar and sent a message that the matter was a success. Sir! Where is that clever fellow who succeeded in my lost cause? Would it not be better to ask him about this girl? Good! But last night he had an unexpected accident. Damn! What accident did he have, and how did it happen? He was also coming behind Sivakai. As I had ordered them to come to the fort after dark, they left Tiravayat in the evening and were approaching the fort in the early hours of the night. You know the news of a sudden storm? Yes, sir. Even I was afraid of the storm and had to stay for a while in a roadside shrine. When Sivagai reached a little distance from the fort, a big tree uprooted and fell on the road. Fortunately, it did not fall on the palanquin and fell on the people who came behind. The son of Vaidya was caught under the fallen tree. When the Prime Minister said this, a woman's voice said, Did only the tree fall on that sandalman's head? Didn't the thunder fall? Was heard saying angrily. Prime Minister Anuradha looked at Pungazali with immense amazement. Looking at her, he said, Tirumalai. Is this woman the one who just spoke? Said. Yes, sir. It seemed so. What is this strange thing? Can the deaf hear? Can the dumb speak? Said Anuradha. It is a very strange thing for a deaf person to hear and a dumb person to speak. But if you, a devotee of the almighty Vishnu Murthy, put your mind to it, what miracle will not happen? Alvarthi Ruve is blooming. Enough. Don't bother the Alvars by dragging them here now. This is not due to Lord Vishnu's mercy. Something has gone wrong. This woman has deceived us. Who is she? What is her purpose? Why has she been deaf and dumb all this time? Lord! Can you ask this woman? Daddy! From the creepy smile on your face, it looks like you might know. Well! I'll just ask her, girl! Aren't you deaf? Do you hear what I'm talking about? Sir! I have sometimes wished I were not deaf. But now I rejoice that I have hearing. Did I not hear the news that the son of the St. Alan doctor fell on his head with a tree? Swami! Is he dead? Said Punghuali. Ah! You hear, you speak, you are not dumb. Said Anuradha. Surely this woman is not dumb. Said the disciple. Aha! Uh -huh. You have found out that I am not dumb. 
I heard that the most learned chief minister in the Chola Empire was Anirutha Brahmaraya. Said Punghuali. Girl. You're teasing me. Take care. If you're not dumb, why haven't you spoken since you came here last night? Why did you pretend to be dumb? Tell me the truth. Asked Prime Minister Aniruthapramadharaya. Pramadharaya. Sir. Until I arrived here last night, I was able to speak. I was even called Vayadai. When I saw the palace of the Prime Minister and the royal business that took place here, I was struck dumb. The ladies of your palace spoke to me by signs. Thinking that they were all dumb, I replied by signs. After listening to their speech, I also remembered the speech. No doubt you are a big mouth, it's a wonder to think how the doctor's son got hold of you. He's clever, though he's a fool. Swami. That son of a sinner did not catch me and bring me. If he had been used to it, he would have been on a pilgrimage to Yamaloka all this time. Pungazali said and showed the knife she had inserted in her waist. Woman. Go ahead and put the knife in your waist. Why are you so angry with him? That's why you say he didn't catch you. He did not catch me, but his men tied me to the boat and left. They tied my sister-in-law to a tree. Even so, the son of the sandal doctor told me that he had nothing to do with it. Until then he is wise. He is doing as I say. Sir, Prime Minister. Are you the ones who sent that turden? Are you the ones who ordered my aunt to be captured and brought back? Your aunt? Is Karayar's daughter Mandakini your aunt? If so, what do you want with the lighthouse keeper Tyagavidanjar? Asked Anurita. Sir. I am his lovely daughter. Aha. I never knew that Tyagavidanjar had such a loud daughter. Don't say this outside, sir. Why, girl? It is famous throughout the country that Brahmareya, the prime minister of the Chola Empire, did not know anything. If they did not know something, would they not have a share in the esteem of the people? Woman. I don't care about my value. Just tell me one more thing I don't know. You said your aunt was captured, where is she now? How did you get on the palanquin I sent? Where did you get on? Asked Anurita. Sir. Why did you send men to capture my mute and mute aunt? Daughter. I must not tell you that, it is a matter of great state. Father. Then I cannot answer your questions. There are ways to be told. It won't work for me. Woman. I will send you to the dungeon. No dungeon can hold me. Those who once went to the dungeon never came back. I know one who has returned, sir. I travelled only yesterday after speaking with Sendan Amuthan. Who is Sendan Amuthan? He is the son of another aunt of mine. He and I were coming from Kodakare. Why daughter? For a long time I have wanted to see this manor house and Kudagaparams in Tanjavur. I was also eager to visit Emperor Sundara Chola. They said that the emperor is not in good health. How is he now, sir? Shall I visit? That's the way it is, daughter. Development is nothing, so forget about visiting the emperor. How can I forget that, sir? I must see the emperor. I must see and tell the news of the wickedness that is taking women by force in his kingdom. Woman. I have no time for mere discussion with you. I did not order you to be taken by force. Tell me how you got on the palanquin I sent. Did someone take you by force and put you on the palanquin? No, Swami. Not only that. This palanquin was empty when we were approaching the Tanjore fort. I climbed the palanquin myself because it was raining. The chief minister Aniruthapramurayar looked at his disciple Alwarkadian and said, Somehow I now understand the matter. While there was a storm and rain on the way, the palanquin was lowered somewhere. At that time, this ant was taken down from the palanquin and she was climbing. The doctor's son fell on him and lost his consciousness. He could not notice. This must have happened, Thirumalai. Do you think my guess is correct? He asked. 
Swami. It happened just as you have now speculated, I saw it with my own eyes. Did you see? Why was that? Why did you keep your mouth shut all this time? Tell me quickly. In the darkness of the hall, the three men chatted. Then I saw her go and climb the palak. From the light of lightning she who came down from the palanquin is different, I came to know that she who climbed again is different. The toothpicks took no notice of this, when the rain stopped for a while, they lifted the palanquin and left. Aha! Uh -huh. So they tricked me? You didn't tell me all this time? What did those two people do after that? After going to the dentist they also left, then I left. Thirumalai. Why did you sit idly by watching all this? Why didn't you stop this ant? Did you also join in their intrigues, what? Apasara, Gurudeva. Apasara. I am not one to do such treachery. First, I did not know that this was their arrangement. Since the palace of Palyavar is a palanquin, I thought it must be the work of a small Palyavatare. Also, can I stop Goddess Mandakini? Even if I stop the storm by damming it, to stop that matter a sea. Is it possible? He tried and failed in Sri Lanka. And that mother knows me. When they see me, they run away in terror, then no one can catch him. When you think about it, the doctor's son seems to be a scoundrel. He brought him this far, didn't he? Gurudev. It seems that their speculations in this matter are not correct. Mandakini Devi must have come of her own accord. She must have changed her mind as she neared Tanjore. Perhaps, perhaps, but the daughter of Kareri cannot have gone very far by now. Wasn't it windy and rainy all night? She must have been somewhere recently. Tirumala. I must catch her somehow. Perhaps this girl knows her abode, daughter. What is your name? The Piper, sir. A.G.A. Beautiful name. There is no equal to the skill of the martyr in naming. Punguzali. You must know where your aunt lives. If you know, tell me. Nothing bad will happen to her. Punguzali thought for a while and said, Swami. I know where my aunt might be now. If you tell me why you have brought her, I can also tell you where she is. Punguzli. It's a big royal thing. You can't tell the secret about the palace. Neither can I. It's impossible to talk to this girl. Sir. If a condition is to be fulfilled. Aha. Uh -huh. This woman is giving me a condition. What is it? If my aunt is to be placed on the throne of Tanjavur and crowned, I will bring her myself. Tirumala. This girl is crazy. You have just seen it, Gurudev. Don't ask her anything. I know where this aunt is. Her son Santhan is in a flower garden not far from the Amuthan fort. He and his mother are offering flowers to the Talakulatar temple. That is where the lady they are looking for is. If you send some men with me, call them. I'm coming. All Workadians said. Bungazalai looked like she was burning Tirumala and said, If you do something like that, I will go to the emperor's palace and complain. I will let the whole town know about your wickedness. She said. Tirumalai. She must be sent to the dungeon, there is no other way. Said Aniruthapramarayar. I will kill anyone who comes near me. Punguzalai pointed out the knife she kept in her lap. Sir. You don't have to send this girl to the nether prison. You can send Ilay Aprati to Kundave Devi's mansion instead. Ilay Aprati is here now. He will make this girl crazy. Maybe Ilay Aprati has something to do with this girl. All Workadians said. Why do you say that? What is going to happen to Ilay Aprati through this woman? Gurudev. Don't they know? The storm that hit here yesterday evening has devastated the shores of the Chola country. Messengers from all over are waiting at their palace gates. Yes, yes. I must see them all now. By then it is a waste of time to give this woman speech. It would have been so much better if she had been born mute. Can't you be cruel without questioning? 
Peng Huali muttered. I hear that there is a great danger to Nagaipatanam. They say that the sea has come and drowned the city. Both Prime Minister Anuradhar and Pungazali were startled on hearing these words. All Workadian concluded, Ilayaprati himself may come here to inquire about it. Before he could close his mouth, the tones of Jay Akosha were heard at the palace gate. Thirumalai, when did you attain enlightenment? It seems that Ilayaprati is coming. Saying that, Anuradha got up and walked towards the door. By then Kundave Devi and Vanathi entered through the same door. When he saw Bungazali standing there, the look of worry on Ilayapiratha's face disappeared, and surprise and happiness were reflected together.